In 1926, Hans Wilsdorf founded a second watch brand called Tudor. A sister company to his already highly successful Rolex. By using off-the-shelf movements, the aim was to offer the consumer the same world-class designs, but at a more affordable price. And in 1952, they made their first self-winding model, the Prince. The first dive watches from Tudor were launched in the 50s, the Prince of Mariner. And since then, they've become almost as collectible as their Rolex counterparts. Many of the Tudor watches even had the Rolex symbol in certain places, most notably on the crown. By 1970, Tudor released its first chronograph, the Oyster Date. It was a manually wound Valjoux mechanical caliber 7734, but unlike its big brother, the Rolex Daytona, it had a date complication. The second was introduced in 71 and nicknamed the Monte Carlo because of its resemblance to a roulette wheel in a casino. In 76, Tudor were to make another step forward that Rolex had not yet done. They released a self-winding chronograph. It wasn't for another 12 years that the Rolex Daytona was to follow suit. Sporting the now famous and ubiquitous Valjoux 7750 movement meant increasing the thickness of the head of the watch. This almost swollen Daytona shape was soon nicknamed the Oyster Date Big Block. Though there were a few iterations, this one with the fixed steel bezel and those screw down pushers and crown guards certainly smacks of its famous sibling. In a climate where it seems every watch enthusiast dreams of getting their hands on a Rolex Daytona, but are often forced to look at alternatives. It may be the case that Rolex have already given us that option years ago. It's actually Carnivale here at the moment. Last a couple of weeks. It's a time when Venetians dress up all, you know, classic with the big fancy dresses and they wear the masks and all that. It's really cool. A little bit subdued this year, of course, for obvious reasons. All the bars and cafes and restaurants are closed after 6 p.m. So it's put a bit of bit of a dampener on it. But people are still trying to celebrate it anyway. I'm on the hunt 
for the perfect fritella. Fritelle are these uh, traditional little puffy pastries they make only at this time of year. And uh, they really vary in quality. You can get some that are just god awful and uh, some that are just beyond divine. Obviously the best ones are to be found here in Ven Venice because other cities around Veneto are making them too but it just doesn't compare. <laughs> so I'm going to look for the best one I can find. I'm going to start with my local cafe here. Andrea works there. I get coffee here every day, pretty much. And he has some nice ones. So I'm going to start here. Ciao, Garo. Ciao, Rishin. Grazie. Metà, metà, grazie. Okay, so first one, my local one here. They're very fluffy and light. Let me check it out. I mean, that's, just, that's a dream. That's a dream. It's just, check it out. It's just a ball of fluff. I don't know what this cream is that they're using, but it's just, it's like heaven. It's like bizarre. These are really dangerous. I've had them before when they're all sticky and gooey and, this is nothing like that. It's like, it almost feels guilt-free, but I know it's not. Let's face it. So, uh, I'm gonna try out a bunch more places. Andrea told me about a couple of other famous places and let's go on the hunt for the perfect fritella. While I'm on my little hunt, let's talk about this uh, Tudor Prince chronograph, the Tiger Woods edition. Kind of a, an amazing watch with a cool history and now becoming more and more a, a collector's piece. The watch is 40 millimeters in diameter, so it's holding back at that vintage size. Since then, Tudor have kind of expanded things with their chronos, got a little bit bigger, but it is large in depth, that big block is uh it's nicknamed that for a very good reason it's uh, kind of a chunky watch really when it's on your wrist especially when you're used to the daytona but from the front it appears like a daytona i know the dials the sub dials are you know at 12 6 and 9 rather than 3 6 and 9 but it's still maybe turned on its side you kind of think hold on is that a daytona it has that thing about it. it has rolex dna in there since then tudor have kind of moved on and they have their own aesthetic that they've mastered at this point the prince chrono is still looks like the old-fashioned uh, rolex watches which kind of verifies that it's uh, and solidifies that idea that it is somewhat of a daytona alternative. I could really imagine myself having a Daytona and the Prince Chrono side by side in a collection that they're kind of two sides of the same coin. So how much thicker is the watch? Well, it is uh, noticeably so. The Daytona is a relatively slender watch, about 12.5 millimeters in thickness. The uh, Tudor Prince clocks in at about 13.7, 13.8 so it's a noticeable difference it feels kind of like a chunkier kind of bloated daytona a swollen daytona if you will it looks like it was a daytona that was uh put in the oven and just kind of grew in size not in diameter but uh in thickness everything is just that little bit more kind of chunky and bulky 
So today is Marta de Grasso, Fat Tuesday. It marks the end of Carnivale here. It's a bit like Pancake Tuesday we had in Ireland growing up. They call it Fat Tuesday. You're supposed to fill up on the unhealthy things today because of course tomorrow Lent begins. And you're supposed to uh, abstain for 40 days and 40 nights just like our Lord himself, if that's your persuasion. And uh, so, yeah, I think I'm going to try a few. I mean, I'm going to try four or five today just for the purpose of the video. I'm <laughs> probably going to have to skip dinner or put my head over the toilet later and just throw them all up. I don't know what I'm going to do. But, um,. You gotta let your hair down every once in a while, right? By the way, what am I wearing? Well, I've got the seed weller on, guys. Of course I do. The stickers are off. <laughs> Everybody was asking, did you take the stickers off? Are you gonna wear the watch? Honestly, at this point, I'm so used to the bigger size. It's crazy. The sub really looks small to me now, to my eye, because I've gotten used to the, to the 43, millimeter beast I'm actually gonna head over now to Judeca which is that island over there uh, I think best described as a kind of a Brooklyn of Venice it's a little bit rougher and filled with artists and poets and people like that who can't really afford to live over here on the fancier side of things if you will but for that reason it's really cool and hip over there you know there's art galleries and cool little weird stores and stuff Elton John lives over there but he lives in the fancier end of it uh, I'm going over to the regular side of it here and there's a place there called Mayer which um, is actually a chain it's around Italy it's probably going to break in the rules here a little bit. I'm going to hit the kind of more traditional, real Venetian places too. But I want to try there. They have pretty good stuff. I'm over here in Judeca, uh, where there's a place called Mayer. Mayer is nice, it's kind of a bit fancy. It reminds me of something uh, they have in New York. I'm not sure if they have it in the rest of the states, called Le Pan de Cotidien, you know, those stores. Kind of fancy, nice interior wood benches and good pasticceria, good coffee. So uh, I heard that their fritella are actually pretty, pretty banging. So let's go check them out. Buongiorno. Porto chiedere una fritella alla crema. Certo, mangia qui, porta via. Porta via. Porta via. Pretty nice. Super fluffy and fresh. They've gone for a more of a traditional style here, I think. Let's give it a shot. One thing I've got to be careful with here are the seagulls. They have their eyes on me. They can smell the fritella. Look at them, look at them. Oh, yes, I know you're after me. I know you are. Let's have a taste real quick before these seagulls literally come down and take it out of my hand. They've done it before. Wow. 
Oh my god. A tiny bit greasier than Andrea's ones, but still really fucking good. Wow. This is a heart attack, man. Look at that. The cream in that. I mean, it's pretty heavy stuff, especially when they're like this. It's got the uh, the raisins in there and stuff, so it is kind of more of the traditional style. For a while, Tudor were actually using Rolex parts. Like, they'd actually use crowns on some of their watches that have the Rolex logo on the crown. It wasn't until, I believe, sometime in the 80s or 90s that they started using their own shield logo on their crowns. They also wanted to keep things on the more affordable side, the cheaper side, um, to make more of an accessible watch for a lot of people. People who weren't in the market for such an expensive watch could get a Tudor instead, and it had Rolex DNA on it. Oh, you see the cake now is coming up. It's like, whoa. And they decided to put the Valju 7750 in there. A, at this point, very famous movement. But the thing about the, the 7750, it's a good movement. You know, it's, it's robust, it's strong. And even though it's known to kind of flop around a little bit, it's rotor, you can feel flop around as you move the watch. It's, uh, it's a bit of a tank, you know, it can survive anything, that, that movement, but it is large. As movements go, it's quite chunky. So being an automatic uh, chrono and all that, you would expect that. It earned itself a nickname, Big Block, which basically describes its blockiness, its heaviness, its top heaviness especially when compared with its cousin, the Daytona. So because of this big block design, the watch is kind of, it's quite top heavy, you know, especially when you're used to the Daytona. And on the Jubilee bracelet, it makes it even more so, but it has a certain charm for that reason. You know, it's got, it's got that kind of imbalance that reminds you of older watches because of course bracelets were never those kind of robust things that we know now, you know, back in the day. Next place I'm going to is Tonnolo. Very famous place. Very well known, very, uh, quite old, been around for a very long time. Don't expect anywhere that looks fancy. <laughs> because if any of you guys saw my uh, Trieste video, you will know that I kind of describe the Italian cafe experience as a kind of like stand at a, a busy bar with lots of other people all shooting back their cafe and it's not like a comfortable environment like the Austrians have and of course Trieste being kind of mezzo austriaco they uh, they have all those large couches and you know that comfort thing going on with their with their coffee experience Italians don't really do that uh, depends maybe if you sit out on a on a balcony outside a place or something like that sure during the summer have a shikarato but <laughs> other than that not really so I expect it to be kind of crammed and busy maybe not for coffee at this hour it's already five but being the last day of Carnivale and the last chance to get a fritella till next year I imagine they're selling out on the fritellas so far even though the my air one was good I still think Andrea's one was better just because of the heaviness you know 
I can't handle the heaviness. If heavy, cakey things are your are your thing, then then maybe you you'd feel differently about it than I do. But for me, the fluffier and lighter it is, the less guilty you feel, <laughs> at very least. This is the uh, Academia Bridge. So I'm just gonna grab the one, which is actually on its way. There's one heading away from us and one coming towards us. And I'm gonna head over there just by Cafoscari where the, the university where my, my daughter is due to graduate actually this year. It keeps getting pushed back because of COVID, but hopefully it'll happen a little later this year. And I'm gonna wind into some streets there and find Tonolo. The most exciting thing about this watch, I think, is the dial, that sunburst silver dial. It's just the way it catches light, it's magnificent. And coupled with that steel bezel, it's just, it's beautiful. I'm not a big fan of these ceramic bezels on these Kronos. I'm not a big fan even of the the ceramic they don't know that everybody wants. I prefer the the metal bezels. That steel bezel on the steel one is gorgeous. And of course I have the two-tone, which I love. Um, it's a very attractive watch to Tudor. You know, one thing though, I have to say, and this goes for the Daytona too, it's a little hard to read. <laughs> I know that sounds ridiculous, but some of these chronos are so complex and they kind of lean more to the aesthetic element. You know, you can read the time, sure, but it's not a glance. You know, you don't just glance down for a half a second. You gotta actually take a look. <laughs> which seems ridiculous but also you get a little distracted by how pretty the watch is you forget to actually read the time I think that happens to a lot of people okay Tonolo looks like it's busy looks like there's actually people in a line outside can you believe it holy god what am I getting into here well, last desperate attempt to find Fritelli Set up. Yeah. Oh, c'è una sola ancora fritella la crema. Niente. Se volete le paste. Tutto qua. Grazie. Mi voleva. Out of them. Early, early bird catches the worm, isn't that the phrase? I'm not an early bird, that's for sure. So I guess the next stop is Rosa Salva. Uh, very, uh, also a very famous, now let me see. I think I have to go towards San Marco. Rosa Salva. Cut across. Let's see. 
Of course, I had two weeks to do this, didn't I? Oh well. In the weirdest way, I'm a little relieved. I think I need a little bit more time before I eat another fritella. My God. This is one of the final iterations of these watches ever made and they set up a sponsorship arrangement with uh, pro golfer Tiger Woods. I know his reputation has gone down somewhat I think since back then because of his personal life and things like that but you have to remember at the time he was literally the embodiment of pro uh, golfing. He was the greatest golfer maybe ever in history so it was quite a thing to have a Tiger Woods edition and I think an excellent touch is how they rather than putting his whole name they just used Tiger because it's a kind of a cool word anyway and the way they wrote it on in red underneath the uh, 12 o'clock dial as a kind of a, a mirror opposite of how they wrote Daytona around the six o'clock dial on, on uh, the Panda Daytona so that's a kind of a cool touch. I actually think that the dial on this watch is maybe even more attractive than the Daytona dial. Dare I say that as a, as a Daytona owner. Uh, strike me down now but it's kind of true. It just shines and reflects beautifully and matches up uh, perfectly with the, with the uh, fixed steel bezel. Some beautiful details there as well with the, uh, the applied uh, Shield Tudor logo. And I have to say, I mean, I'm a sucker for uh, a date window and a Cyclops. A lot of people don't like those, but uh, I'm a big fan. I even think this Cyclops is a little stronger than the regular Rolex. I know Rolex is 2.5 times magnification, but for whatever reason, it's easier to read the date on this. It may just be that the date window is just simply larger and therefore it's appearing as a stronger magnification, but it's extremely legible. Of course, a lot of people are gonna hate that with the, you know, the Cyclops on there. They'll think the whole thing is far too busy with subdials, you know, applied logo, Cyclops and so on. But um, I actually kind of like it. I feel like it's a bridge of, uh, it's kind of the mix of all the great Rolex things. You've got that beautiful Panda dial, that whole Daytona aesthetic and the classic Cyclops on there. As we all know it's so easy to spot a Rolex watch from across the room because of that uh, Cyclops. Not many other watches have them. And I'm personally a big, big, big fan. Wow, look at that. This bracelet, of course, is a jubilee. Uh, yet another thing that Rolex have never done with their Daytona. And I think it brings it into a more dressy realm. The watch becomes a little bit less sporty and moves over into the dressy side of things. And it all matches up with that magnificent sunburst silver dial. The whole thing steps into a kind of an elegant uh, world. Again, counterpointed by the fact that it is the big block and it has that kind of utilitarian thing to it with the panda dial and the date complication. So it's kind of giving you the best of everything uh, that the watch world has to offer. I certainly miss the date sometimes when I'm wearing my Daytona or any non-date watch. It's not something you use all the time, but that very moment when you want to stare down and see what the date is, uh, is always that moment you happen to be wearing a non-date watch, right? It's Murphy's Law. Tudor have moved away from Rolex a little bit in their design, their styles. They've kind of found their own uh, footing as far as design, and you can tell a Tudor watch from any other now. Whereas before, they were very, very closely tied in with Rolex, and I actually kind of like that. Like, they're all growing from the same garden, if you will. Even putting it beside the Black Bay 58, for example, you can see that it, uh, it appears as if it's two completely different watch makers entirely. 
Now there is one uh, final thing about this watch that cannot be ignored, and that is the value up and up steadily in recent years. I think people are beginning to realize what a gem it is for a collector and uh, how valuable it's gonna be in the future given its strong, strong Rolex DNA. So Rosa Salva is next, my last hope. Tonolo are out. Clean out of them. I guess there's a desperate dash for them now. Because of... Uh, after today, they won't be available anymore. Here it is. The mythical Rosa Salva. And there's a line here too. Of course there is. But it looks like they've still got some in stock. See right there in the window. All right, mission accomplished. The sacred Fritella da Rosa Salva. What they say is the best. I was just over in Rolex there and I was asking them and they were like, yeah, don't worry, that tunnel was was all sold out. The Rosa Salva ones are better. So I'm like, okay, looking forward to this. So, moment of truth. Oh, okay. <laughs> Excuse me for a minute. I need a private moment for this. very slightly crispy and very slightly not I won't say burnt but just kind of little crispy on those little peaks and then counterpointed by the fluffy angelic cloud that's on the inside it has an effect on one's mind like that. this one's a little sweeter than than Andrea's but it, it, it's superior. Yeah, that's that's crack cocaine right there. That that should be against the law. Okay, I gotta hand it to Rosa Salva. That's dangerous stuff. That's dangerous. This is not healthy. Don't do this at home, kids. Well, you know, every now and then you gotta let your hair down, you know, and just enjoy the the festive stuff. It was a Woody Allen who said, "You'll live to be 150 if you'll give up all the things." that would make you want to. I am headed home to have a heart attack now. So let's face it, the world is looking for Daytonas. Daytonas were already hard to get before the, uh, the frenzy about the, uh, the Panda Dial ceramic bezel ones and it has now reached uh, kind of crazy levels. But it's funny to me that people are looking to other brands. They don't really have to. And Tudor would appear to be another brand, but it's not really, not behind the curtain. So it's funny to me that people are looking to 
other watch brands may be very valid other watch brands for their chronograph but let's admit it in many cases because they simply just can't get their hands on a, a Daytona at least not at a reasonable price when all along Rolex were offering this alternative something cheaper a bit more robust yes but pretty much from the same family certainly aesthetically so final verdict on the Fritelle well I'll put my air in third place not to say that they were bad but really uh, there's some stiff competition here Andreas I was definitely put in second but uh, there's no doubt that Rosa Salva has to take lead position that stuff is very dangerous indeed it's a shame I didn't get to try the tunnel low once maybe next year a lot of people who I was explaining what I was doing you know when I was trying these and filming myself doing it they were saying you know for sure Tonalo was going to win uh, but then the guys over at Rolex assured me that uh, no no Rosa Salva is king and uh, I think I might have to agree with them even though I didn't try Tonalo maybe next year I'll get the best ones side by side